You're welcome to the program Health and Wellness on Owileke TV. I am Antonia Mokolo, and I'm super excited to have you join today's episode. This show is all about you, your well-being, and the amazing world of health. We'll be having meaningful conversations, sharing expert insights. So grab a comfy seat, a drink. Let's dive into the conversation about your health because you matter and your health matters. In today's episode, we'll be talking about sleep disorders. They're also known as sleep-wake disorders. So sleep disorders involves problems with the quality, timing, and amount of sleep we get every night. As we know, sleep is very critical to both our physical and mental health. And there are two types of sleep that generally happen in a pattern of three to five circles per night. We'll have the rapid eye movement, uh, that's at this point is when most dreaming occurs and we also have the non-rapid eye movement and this has three phases including the deepest sleep so when you sleep is very important because your body works on a 24-hour cycle like a clock and it's called the circadian rhythm so this helps you know when to sleep how long you need to sleep and how your body regulates all its function and how we sleep how we sleep varies from person to person and also from age, uh, different between the different ages. According to the National Sleep Foundation, most adults need about seven to nine hours of restful sleep each night. But many of us do not get enough sleep. Close to 30% of adults get less than six hours of sleep each night. And only about 30% of, let's say, secondary school students get at least eight hours of sleep on an average. Statistics have shown that more than 50 million Americans have chronic sleep disorders and over 70% of Nigeria's population also so follow this line. We all know that sleep helps our brain function properly and not getting enough sleep or poor quality sleep has many consequences. The most obvious ones are tiredness, decreased energy, you become irritable, you have problems concentrating at work or in school, and the ability to make decisions and your mood can also be affected whenever. Have you, have you wondered that when you don't sleep well at night, you end up being grumpy throughout the day? And also sleep problems also come with symptoms of depression or anxiety. So if you're depressed or you're having anxiety issues, you also have these sleep problems are symptoms of knowing that you have anxiety or depression. So many um, lack of sleep, lack of sleep or too much sleep uh, are linked to many chronic heart health problems such as heart disease, diabetes, and sleep disturbances can also be a warning sign for medical and neurological problems such as congestive heart failure, osteoarthritis, and Parkinson's disease. So whenever you notice that there is a change in the quality, timing of your sleep, this may be your body's way of telling you that something is wrong somewhere in maybe parts of your body and you need to seek medical help. There are different types of sleep disorders ranging from apnea to insomnia, to um, restless leg syndrome, but the most common is insomnia. And this involves problems in uh, when you have problems trying to sleep or staying asleep. So to know you have insomnia, the sleep difficulties must occur at least three nights a week for at least three months. So if it's uh, once in a while something, you might not really say, oh, you have this. And it must also affect significant, it must also be something that affects significant areas of your life. It alters um, your daily functioning. So a sleep study is conducted and it allows the physician to identify how long and how well you are sleeping and to also detect specific sleep problems. So a sleep diary is used to record all your sleep habits and you discuss with your physician. So once you notice these symptoms, you go talk to your physician. A sleep diary contains the information such as when you go to bed, when you get out of sleep, when you wake up, when you get out of bed, when you take naps, when you exercise, you eat, you consume alcohol and caffeinated beverages. So all of these things help the physician to know if uh, the, when, when you take alcohol more, what happens to your sleep pattern? When you eat certain foods, what happens to your sleep pattern? So they will be able to trace and diagnose properly the kind of sleep disorder you have 
or know the right solution to prefer to the sleep disorder. Um, mostly problems can occur at any age, but most commonly it starts in young adulthood. And this type of insomnia often varies with age. And the symptoms can be episodic. That is, it can be um, it can happen once an episode of the symptoms lasting from like one to three months. It can be persistence that's coming every every time with symptoms that last for three months or more. And it can also be recurrent, which means the symptoms last within two or more. You have two or more episodes within a year. Also, the symptoms of insomnia can also be brought on by specific life events or situation. So, for instance, you go through uh, a tip, uh, you go through a very difficult phase. For instance, you go through a very difficult phase in life, and you're you're having this post-traumatic stress disorder, and you you're having different problems trying to get out from the situation you find yourself in. You find out that these sleep problems start from there. So when people, maybe you lose a loved one or you lose your job or you just lose something very dear to you, sleep problems can also happen or you suffer a cause that is very traumatic, sleep problems can also begin from there. So now we've looked at the symptoms of sleep, sleep problems. Let's take a look at the treatment and self-help. What can you do to help yourself? Yes, we know there's a part of you going to your physician to keep a sleep diary and also track what you eat and everything. But your sleep problem can be um, helped when you develop good sleeping habits. And most over-the-counter sleep medicines, they, they are, with that, that are commonly used to treat allergies, they are not addictive. But the thing about taking these over-the-counter medications is that they can become less effective over time. So when you keep taking them, when you have to take those drugs before you induce sleep, your body gets used to it and it can also contribute to confusion. It can also contribute to blood vision and urine retention. So what's, the, what's our best bet? Relaxation techniques. You can find ways to relax before bedtime. So when you unwind, you have... Um, more like a nighttime routine for you to unwind, let go of the day's stress. It helps you put you in the mood for you to sleep well. And also let your healthcare provider know about alternative medicines, supplements, herbs that you're taking to help your sleep. So when your healthcare provider knows this, these are the things you're taking, he knows what and what to advise you, the things to stop taking and the things to, the habits to pick up and uh, the things you need to take. But well, same time you go to bed and wake up even on the weekends. So if you go to bed at 10 p.m., wake up at 5 a.m., let it be consistent throughout the week. That's where your body is able to adjust and uh, your quality of sleep improves and the time, the duration of your sleep also improves. Now, allow your body, also allow your body to wind down with a calming activity, such as reading away from bright lights or avoiding electronic devices. So when you hold your phone or you're in front of electronic devices for the longest while before you sleep, it doesn't let you go to sleep easily your the blue lights from the from the electronic devices keeps you awake so it sends signals to your brain that we are still working we are still at work so let's continue it doesn't let you fall asleep easily so put away your devices leave leave your social media you'll come back tomorrow leave your social media leave your computer leave your television just allow your body to calm down relax and you watch how you fall asleep better also, to improve uh, the sleep disorder condition, you also have to exercise daily. So exercise has, in our previous video, we talked about the benefits of exercising. And we cannot overemphasize how important exercise is. So when you exercise daily, it helps your body um, it helps your body function properly and your body is able to adjust to the different conditions that you go through throughout the day and you see that you're able to have a good sleep routine. Now, another important thing is that you pay attention to your bedroom environment. Your bedroom ought to be cool, it ought to be quiet and if it's dark, that's the best. Your mattress and your pillow should be comfortable and supportive. So when, you, when you're sleeping with bright lights and your room, you, your bed is not comfortable, it does not let you when you're sleeping with bright lights your bed is not comfortable it does not let you sleep well make your bed lay your bed properly before you sleep it will improve the quality the quality of your sleep if your room is dark your brain just knows that oh it's rest time let's sleep and your system automatically just shuts down and allows you to relax so 
if you if you don't sleep in a dark room try it and you watch how your sleep improves also avoid alcohol caffeine and heavy meals in the evening this do, does not allow you sleep properly at night so if you're someone that loves to uh, take a bottle of alcohol before you go to bed you should consider putting that habit aside so you can sleep properly Thanks for joining us on this health journey today. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel and follow us on all our social media platforms. Our website is www.owilake.tv. Share the love with your friends. My name is Antonia Wonkolo and until next time, catch you in the next episode.